Welcome to my Punching for Beginners video. In this video, we'll cover good work practices, how to proceed in cutting, basic and advanced punching techniques, as well as efficient production strategies. But before we get started, let's take a closer look at what the puncher does. The fellow buncher is most often the one to commence work in the log harvesting process. Similar to mowing lawn, it starts cutting a strip into the designated patch until it reaches the boundary line. Another strip is then cut from the boundary line back out to the road. Strips are most often cut going in, then out again from left to right, and the wood is left in piles for the grapple skitter. Here's some basic information to understand before beginning. Boundary lines and brushwood. Typically cut during a day to help nighttime bunching, it reduces the likelihood of mistakenly crossing boundary limits and or wasting time in brushwood. Bunches are placed against the protected areas unless otherwise specified. When roads are cut, the bunches are placed on the outer perimeter. Inbound strips. Bunches are placed to the left of the strip with butt ends pointed towards the road. They are positioned on a 45 degree angle prevent unnecessary breaking of the standing trees when pulled by the skitter. Piles cross over into previous strips. Outbound strips. Bunches are placed butt ends towards the road and within the strip itself. This helps keep more trees standing and gives the skitter and or other equipment a place to start working without having to drive over piles. Bunches can be placed on either side of the strip, but preferably to your right. Avoid putting them directly behind you as they could become an obstruction. Careful logging. This is the trees and brushwood that are left standing in between each strip. Some laws require certain amounts of mature sized trees to be left standing. The buncher should only reach side to side to cut ideal sized trees, thus protecting smaller timber and brushwood. Do not leave careful logging closer than 100 to 150 feet from the road for this will give other machines room to work efficiently. The buncher has to carefully select acceptable sized trees and discard the rest in its path. The machine we'll be using today is John Deere's 903J feller buncher with a G and Roy felling head. Let's get started. There are endless ways to go about cutting a strip, which can often be overwhelming. Here are a few key points to help you focus on what matters. Strips should be as wide as the machine can reach on both sides. Limit reach within one foot from being fully extended to minimize stress on the stick boom cylinder. Cut trees as low to the base as possible unless otherwise instructed. 
Only cut minimum allowable size trees when they are in your direct path and only reach side to side for trees that are of ideal sizes. Although when cutting road, everything should be cleared. Working inbound. When working inbound, focus on clearing an area to the left of the strip to place your bunch. At this point, instead of moving back to where you previously were, continue clearing a path ahead until the machine can swing freely without any obstruction. From here, swing the machine, pointing and moving it backwards, cutting the remainder of the area. Pay careful attention when dumping the wood, keeping a safe distance between the saw and the tracks. This is most dangerous when dumping at a 45 degree angle. When the bunch is out of reach, proceed in making a new one. Working outbound. When working outbound, clear an area to the right of the strip to place your bunch. Similar to the inbound strategy, continue to forge ahead until the machine can swing without any obstruction. Turn the machine, pointing and moving it backwards, cutting the remainder of the area. When the bunch is out of reach, proceed to start a new one. Tips and Tricks Bunch Sizes Determining what size a bunch to make will depend on the size of the timber and the skitter's grappling capabilities. Heavy trees with many limbs can create a lot of drag, making it more difficult to move and skid. This type of wood can be put into smaller piles, and smaller wood can be put in larger piles. If a smaller sized bunch is desired, proceed in starting it alongside the buncher. The key in making larger piles is to start your pile ahead of you. The further ahead you start, the larger your pile will be. For example, if you're working inbound, Focus on clearing an area to the left and ahead. Likewise, if working outbound, clear a place to the right and ahead. Once the bunch is positioned, clear the vicinity in this pile. Discarding Trees It is best to discard unwanted timber to the side of your upcoming strip. For example, if you're working inbound towards the boundary line, this would be to your right, whereas working outbound back towards the road would be to your left. When possible, pulling the trees towards you on an angle is optimal. This method keeps your work in previous areas clean and hazard free. To lower chances of getting flat tires on skidders or other unnecessary damages, break any pointed or distended timber and recut protruding stumps. Avoid pushing or discarding any timber ahead of you. This will only clutter the ground, slow you down, and interfere with cutting. 
If cutting around boundary lines, discard the wood towards the opposing flag side, so to not hit and lose sight of them. Preserve head cylinders by keeping grab arms and accumulators in the closed position when not cutting. When large trees and deadwood need to be discarded, the best course of action is to cut or move these logs to the side, out of the way. If the log is still standing, a more simplified method is to grab or cut the log, tilt the buncher head backwards in the desired direction, and releasing at the same time. This can also be done with trees in the buncher head, creating a separation between them by keeping the accumulators closed, only using the grab arms. Grab the wood on the side it will be discarded on. These techniques can be performed on either side. Grab arm and accumulator timing. Timing the grab arms and the accumulators to work smoothly together helps preserve more trees and creates less waste. When the accumulators remain closed and a tree is cut, the log will bind between the grab arms and the accumulators. This will often break smaller trees due to the binding pressure from the grab arms. You can counter this by opening the accumulators before the binding occurs. The timing of this will change as the buncher head fills up. When tree layout permits, proceed cutting the first tree using the accumulators instead of the grab arms. Saw blade jams. There are many things that contribute to the saw blade's decline in rotation, creating the likelihood of jams. Warmer temperatures, snow, large timber, dull saw teeth, cutting speed, and method. When saw speeds decline excessively, cutting turns into ripping and must be avoided. Pieces of wood can easily get wedged against the saw and the guard, causing it to stop. If this happens, turn off the saw, using a stump or similar means, force the blade to rotate in the opposite direction until it moves freely again. Then turn it back on and wait for the blade to reach proper RPM before cutting again. In more severe cases, Wedge pieces may need to be removed manually using bars, hammers, or other tools. Thick, wet, or heavy snow can create extreme drag. Perform a quick sweep in front of the trees before cutting. A simple left to right or right to left maneuver will remove the bulk of the snow. Get as close as you can to the tree before cutting and avoid pushing it any further than the log itself. Snow and Trees During the winter months, precipitation fills the trees with snow. When cutting, the snow falls and causes low visibility, which can often force you to stop until visibility is restored. The main objective is to find a way to knock down the snow without having to wait for it to settle before continuing. Simply use the trees in the buncher head as a tool to disturb the tops of the standing trees. Here are some suggestions. Alternate from side to side while cutting and come back to the area when the majority of the snow has settled. When proceeding to dump your wood, tilt the buncher head slightly forward while swinging the machine to graze all the trees on the way. 
Avoid falling snow between cuts by slightly turning the bunger head clockwise. And work downwind whenever possible. It is always good to have a mental image of your next move so you can keep working when blinded. Large trees. Sometimes you'll come across oversized trees that are bigger than a buncher head itself. Therefore, a different approach to cutting is required. Changing your tactic can also be a good method to preserve mechanical parts. Depending on the size of the tree, it will require multiple cuts. Start the first cut in the direction you want the tree to fall. Clear the surrounding work area, then cut the opposing side. Cut and push it simultaneously to manipulate the tree in the desired direction. Be sure to release your hold when it's falling to prevent mechanical failures. If a tree has fallen into the wrong location and absolutely needs to be moved, cut it in half to manipulate. Drop piling. New operators should take their time to place their bunches properly and when comfortable, consider the following technique. This method preserves hydraulic cylinders and time by manipulating the wood in the buncher head to fall into position rather than precisely placing it. In other words, releasing the wood before it touches the ground. This can take time to learn, but is well worth the effort in the end. Timing Distance and angles of the buncher head are the main factors for this technique. If you are dumping at a 90 degree angle, the tip of the buncher head ski will guide you in positioning the trees correctly. However, when dumping at a different angle, the buncher head will need to be tilted forward and turned to the same angle as the bunch before releasing. The less you tilt the head forward, the further and more unpredictably the trees will fall. Therefore, increasing the angle shortens the distance and makes it easier to predict. Ideally, release the wood just before the tops of the trees land, ensuring they land before the butts do. This reduces the likelihood of logs bouncing out of position, which is more likely to happen when the tree butts land first. Filling the buncher head promotes more successful drops. Correct any misplaced logs to help the skitter. Right side cutting. Typically, most cutting is done on the left side of the buncher head, but don't let this limit you. A lot of times cutting to the right of the head would be less hassle and better in general. Ultimately, your choice of what side to cut should be determined by the tree layout. The only disadvantage to cutting on the right side is low visibility, but this can be easily overcome with some practice. When performing right side cutting, be mindful of the buncher head stabilizer. It is a great indicator of where the grab arms are when fully open. Align the right side of the stabilizer with the tree and proceed in cutting. A saw spinning clockwise, looking from the top, is less likely to crisscross the wood. With time, you'll gain a better understanding of your machine and how to efficiently use the more concealed parts, such as the grab arms and the saw blade. Crossed wood.
Correcting logs as they crisscross in the buncher hit can be done by using the weight of the tree to your advantage. Rotate the buncher head into the right direction and quickly stop the rotation as you loosen the grab arms. Then wait for the shift to happen and re-tighten the grab arms to secure the trees. The momentum of the trees will force misplaced logs into position. Loosening or completely opening the accumulators can also help if you're having trouble. Determining what side to rotate the buncher head depends on the direction you want the tree to move. If the top of the tree protrudes to the left side of the buncher head, turn it right or clockwise. If the tree is sticking out to the right side, perform the correction to the left or counterclockwise. Sometimes the top of a tree will jump over the stabilizer. This can be due to dull saw teeth and or a full buncher head, and is most likely to happen with small and lighter trees. If the buncher head is full, it's best to dump the wood. If it's not full, and you haven't opened the accumulators yet, then leave them closed. If you have opened them, then don't reclose them. Tilt the buncher head forward, open the grab arms as you rotate the head in the direction of the log and retighten. If you're having trouble with this technique, dump the wood and try again next time. Soft Terrain When working in soft terrain, there is a risk of sinking the machine. To avoid any possibility of this happening, the operator must first identify soft areas and proceed with caution. When on soft ground, the machine will feel like a floating boat and stability will drastically decrease. Make sure to minimize travel and sharp movements as much as possible. Keep cutting close to the machine and limit the amount of wood in the buncher head. Create a brush mat by putting materials such as brushwood and trees before moving ahead. Note that in these circumstances, unwanted wood can be broken towards the center of the strip. If you happen to get stuck, it may be best to wait for help than to make the situation worse. Completely avoiding soft areas is sometimes the best option. Inclines When cutting on slopes and hills, you must be wary of two important aspects. Firstly, the direction of the tracks. And secondly, the amount of weight in the buncher head. When a slope is too steep, cut what's within reach and work around it. The buncher is more likely to slide sideways, which is why it is best to always point the tracks in the slope's direction. In a scenario where the tracks are sideways, leaving higher stumps will help you from sliding. When cutting downhill with sideways tracks, extreme caution must be taken as the machine's weight capabilities and stability are drastically reduced. If the weight in the buncher head exceeds that of the machine's counterweight, the buncher will topple over. Working downhill also presents another problem. When the top of the buncher head or stabilizer comes in contact with the tree before the saw, it will often break the tree before it is cut. To avoid this, cut higher making sure the buncher head is level, and if necessary, recut stumps afterwards. Trees going uphill can be cut at the base as usual though the grab arms are more likely to run out of reach before grabbing the tree. If this is the case, cut the tree level. Your situation should determine how to proceed. When traversing difficult terrain, you can help yourself by using the buncher head to support the machine. Avoid trapping yourself where you are unable to move and swing. 
ensure a safe distance between you and the standing trees. When moving up slopes, you can push or pull yourself up with the heel of the buncher head. When possible, grab a hold of solid timber to pull yourself. Turn the buncher head on an angle to avoid cutting it and grab as low to the base as possible, pulling and moving simultaneously. Time management and production. While you increase your knowledge about bunching, start to examine areas that may help you save time. Shaving off seconds here and there can really add up at the end of the day. The following are some good methods to explore. Fill up the buncher head to eliminate dumping times, but don't overfill as this can be counterproductive. Work to minimize your travel until work area is clear and move in 5 foot increments. Start a new bunch when it is out of reach and drop pile the wood instead of placing it. If the buncher runs multiple shifts, then cutting around brushwood should be done during the day. Use the treetops as a guide for cutting and making a separation between areas, harvesting the better side. And like with any machine, servicing and maintenance is best done during the day. In closing, a productive bunch operator must instill good work habits and a desire to advance their skills. Don't be afraid to question yourself, why am I doing this a certain way? Is there a better way to perform this task? And most importantly, learn from your mistakes. Once you have established an understanding of your machine, speed will naturally follow. Don't give up and always strive to learn. Share your knowledge and take advice. You only stop learning when you think you know it all. Thanks for watching.